Greetings, everyone. Uh, the purpose of this video is to figure out, given a set, how many possible subsets and proper subsets exist for that set. And in fact, we will just simplify the problem even more to if we're given the number of elements in a set, um, So let's take a look at an example to begin. So let's suppose that we have the set X here, which contains the elements A, B, and C. And we wanna find the number of subsets uh, that the set X has, and then we're gonna determine how many of those are proper subsets. Well, to determine the number of um, subsets of a given set, um, I have found that it's best to start with a certain size or maybe the smallest possible size of a subset and then work our way up from there. So I'll start, first of all, we know that this, the empty set, and however you notate that, I like to do the O with a line through it, that's a subset of any set. So that's gonna be a subset of the set X. And then we can move on to subsets of size one. So that would simply be all the sets that contain a single element um, that's given in the set X. So for example, the set that contains just the element A, the set that contains just the element B, set that contains just the element C, uh, and that would be it since there are only three elements in the set. So that would be all of our possible uh, single element sets. We can then move on from there to all of the elements or all of the subsets of size two. And again, I like to create kind of a system for doing that. So I'm gonna start with all the subsets of size two that contain the element A. And there would just be two of those because I can do the set A along, or sorry, the set that contains A along with the element B. And then I can also do the set that contains A with the element C and that would be it. There are gonna be no more that contain A since there's no other elements I can pair it with. So then I'll move on to the two element sets that contain the element B. Well, I've already got one of those. That would be this set up here that contains A and B. Uh, and then the other one would be that contains A, uh, B and C. Whoops, wrong color there. And then again, we would be done with all two element sets containing the element B since there's nothing else to, to uh, pair it with. We then would move on to the two element sets containing C. However, uh, we've already listed all those because C can be paired with A as we've already done. It can be paired with B as we've already done. And so there are no more. And at this point you may think we're done, but we've actually only listed all the proper subsets here. But remember that any set is also a subset of itself. So the original set we started with A, B, and C, that would also be a subset here. And at this point, we have now listed all possible subsets of the given set X. So if we go ahead and count those, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of those. So we see that the number of subsets of this three element set is eight. And the number of those that are proper subsets, remember proper subsets are sets that are strictly smaller than the given set. Uh, in this case, this would be all of them except for set eight, right? So all of these sets one that we've labeled as one through seven, so we see that in this case, there are seven proper subsets. And, you know, this was for this specific um, set X here that contains the elements A, B, and C. Hopefully you believe me though, that this would apply to any set of size three or that contains three elements, right? So it doesn't matter what they are. If there are three of them, then the number of subsets would be eight. The number of proper subsets would be seven. Okay, so we see again with the three elements that we have eight subsets, and seven proper subsets. Let's try another example uh, of a little bit smaller set. So now we're gonna have the set Y, which contains just the elements one and two. So this is a two element set. 
Um, and again, the results we get here will apply to any two element set. And so let's try to list out the possible subsets here. So again, the empty set is one of the subsets. The empty set is a subset of any set. We can do our one element sets, which would contain either the element one or the element two. And in fact, that's all of the proper subsets, right? Because any set larger than that is gonna have the same number of elements as the given set. Okay, so those would be all of our proper subsets. And so we know then that the final set we can come up with here is the set itself, which would be the set one, two. All right, and if we uh, count these up, we see one, two, three, four sets. And so it turns out that the number of subsets of any two element set, that's going to be four. And then as we mentioned, or as I mentioned, the first three here, those are all the proper subsets. Those are gonna be the only proper subsets. And so we see that there are three proper subsets. And so one thing we're already saying from these two examples is that the number of proper subsets is always one less than the number of total subsets, which again, hopefully makes sense uh, since really all we're throwing out there if we're talking about sub proper subsets is the original set itself. So a couple of things, again, just to observe from those two examples, the whole set is always a subset. The empty set is a subset of every set. But again, we want to be able to figure out if I give you any set or I tell you the number of elements in a set, how could we determine how many subsets it has? Well, let's use this table to kind of guide our thinking as we try to generalize this, figure this out for any case. So first of all, we found that with a two element set, that was that set Y we looked at, the number of total subsets there was four. The number of proper subsets was three. When we had a three element set, so that was the first one, the set X that contained the elements A, B, and C, we saw that there were eight total subsets and seven of those were proper subsets. And we're wondering if maybe we start to see a pattern here, uh, particularly for the number of subsets, so that we can maybe fill in how many subsets and proper subsets a four element set would have without having to go ahead and list them all out. So any guesses? Hmm. Well, if we look at what's happening here, right, we went from four to eight, which means we either increased by four or we doubled what we had, which gives us candidates of either 12 or 16 for the number of uh, subsets of a four element set. Hmm, which could it be? What do you think? The answer, it turns out, is 16. So a four element set will have 16 proper subsets. And then remember that the number of, or sorry, num the number of subsets of a four element set will be 16. The number of proper subsets will be one less, which is 15. Okay, well, what do we see here? We see any sort of a pattern. We saw that for two element set, there were four subsets, three element set, eight, four element set, 16. If I give you any number of elements, so n here is representing any number, how could we find the number of subsets? You may see by now but that comes from the formula two raised to the nth power meaning two to the power of the number of um, elements. So how does that work? Well, if we look at four here, for example, if we do two raised to the power of the number of elements, two squared, that gives us four. For when we have three elements, if we do two to that power, two to the third, that gives us the eight there. We have four elements, notice two to the fourth. If you work that out, that does get to be 16. So that confirms what we thought here, that the number of subsets is given by two to the n. And then as we mentioned, the way to um, 
determine the number of proper subsets is just to subtract one from that number. So we would take two to the n minus one, that will give us our number of proper subsets. Okay, that's it for now. Thank you for watching.